Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm working on my YouTube Artist Collective piece for this round and the theme this time is actually Masquerade which is something that I really have always loved. I love the theme of masks and masquerades because they're so mysterious and I love the more graphic elements that I can put in masks. This is, and I talk about it every once in a while, but this is one of the biggest inspirations for me when I was around high school age when I was doing art was masks. So this is actually a thing that I would really like to readdress within the next couple of weeks because after working on this one and going with basically my first concept, I've come up with a few other ones that I wish that I had done or that I'm really excited about exploring. So this will be more in a series in the line of, of masquerade inspired pieces. But for today, I can talk a little bit about the process and a few differences that I did with this one. So from the very beginning, I already had it transferred with a light box over onto my final watercolor paper. And I just use Colerase pencils for this. I find that they work really well because they come in a variety of colors. So I can choose one that's gonna be not very obvious if I miss some areas when I'm erasing it. And it also does not smear nearly as much as graphite. I absolutely do do not recommend that you use graphite when you're transferring things over to watercolors because it just smudges all over your paper. And if you miss stuff, it can blend into your watercolors and then make it really muddy. So I like Holy Race pencils. Usually I use the non-photo blue since it's super light, but this time I went with, I think it's just a normal blue because that's the one I could find. But I went on into inking it with my Micron pens. And this time I used three different colors, I believe. I used a blue one and a black one and also a pink one, which I actually found that I really loved the look of the pink one. I loved how it went with several of the other colors that I used. So this one might be one that I use more often. And after I went in with my Micron pens, I used my masking fluid to cover up the figure. That way I could paint the background and get it all correct. And I'll have that masking fluid I use listed down in the description as well as hopefully pretty much everything that I use to use to create this painting that'll be listed down below but I actually ended up using a completely different paper this time around which is very unusual for me so I always use the same brand and I know I know it's not actually pronounced this way but but Arches, that's the brand that I use it's the one I used from the very beginning when I took my watercolor class that was pretty much the requirement. They sold it at the art office that was right next door to my, my class and my teacher required that it was pretty much that paper or the equivalent, but basically that paper really. So from, from the get-go, that was always what I used. But lately I've been feeling mm, like, it, like it's time for me to spread my wings and try out some new papers because I really love smoother surfaces, but I've struggled with using hot press of the same brand. So I'm, I'm trying some stuff out to see how I feel about it, how it works with my process. This one is Canson, but I'm not sure exactly which one it is, but I will again, have it listed down in the description. It is one of those single sheets, the nice full size. So pretty much just a different brand, a different version of what I normally use when I'm doing paintings like this. And it is in the same price tier as the arches that I normally use, but I had some some pros and cons with this. It was it was really interesting to me to see how it behaved differently because I, I know the other paper pretty much inside and out. When you use it that often, you get a hang of how many washes can I do and how much can I scrub at it before I start deteriorating the paper and stuff like that. And knowing your medium and knowing the tools that you use really is empowering to be able to get the most out of it. So this one was, it was fun in the way that it was new and I was testing things out, but I was surprised at some of the behaviors of this paper. So probably the first, the biggest con I had for it is that it bled so much. I was shocked how I would put a layer down and it just would not hold a sharp line. It would reactivate paint that with my my typical my arches watercolor paper it never would do that not even once so i was having it happen left and right uh you might be able to see it where her outstretched arm i actually put misket on that and i i made sure that i got right up to the line so i know it wasn't the misket's fault or me not getting quite up there but 
when I peeled it off, the paint had actually leached beneath the misket and gave it this really blotchy look. And as I added more layers on her skin later, it also reactivated that background color and sucked it into her arm area. So I was really kind of, I wouldn't say frustrated because I actually just went with the flow with this one. I didn't get too stressed out about it, but it was really interesting to see that happen in a lot of different places. So that is something that maybe there's ways that I can combat it a little bit better or things that I'm not aware of yet because I'm not as well adjusted to this type of paper, but it really did affect a lot of the areas. I found that the hair I had to give extra special attention to and extra layers of line work and a little bit of gouache to help rein it back in because it got really fuzzy in that layering process of the watercolors where it started to leach out. I also found that certain areas on the paper were more crisp and held the watercolor better, whereas other areas were also a little bit more inconsistent and had more of a bleed problem. So I don't know, that, that was something that it was, it was hard to get it exactly the way I want. But some of the pros that I had for this paper is I actually really liked the tooth of it. It was way more subtle than the arches that I normally use. It was a lower tooth, which suited me a lot better. I prefer that. It feels better when I'm using Micron pens. It's not as strenuous on my hand. And I feel like it can give me more control. Of course, the bleeding problem kind of counteracted that, but but I like that it that it's something that if I were to figure that issue out, I would have a little bit more control out of it. And I also really like the visual texture of it a little bit more. I like looking at it more so. It looks more soft and velvety in a way. And I also think that the way that the watercolors sit within the tooth is really pleasant. I love looking at original watercolors for that reason, for the way that it just interacts with the paper and everything and it comes together. But I also, I'm not, I'll, I'll admit this, I'm not sure if it's 100% true or if it just kind of feels that way, but the colors felt like they were a little bit more vibrant with this paper. I think they popped a little bit more and they felt like they looked a little bit more pure and clear. So I don't know about that, but, but I liked it. I liked working on it. I liked the colors that it produced. It's just that, that bleeding problem. So I don't know, I, I guess I'm gonna have to, test it out a little bit more, see if I can get a handle on that. I kind of think that I won't be able to because it seemed like it was just really happening very quickly. I also found that it has this weird visual look to it when you add a few too many layers to it and it doesn't take as many layers as Arches does, which is definitely a negative for me. But, but it is strange because if you reach a certain point where it's really saturated in the paint already, when it gets wet, it does have almost this um, deco look to it where it has lots of like little white spots. And when it dries, it looks normal, but when it's wet, it looks like it's gonna turn into something really strange. But that's probably it for my mini review on this paper. I, I will say that it was really enjoyable to work with something different and to, to see the way that it can affect my process and my artwork. And, and hopefully I'd like to be able to try a lot more of them and see how it fits with, with where I want to go with my art. So if you have any suggestions for paper that you love for watercolors, I'd love to hear it. I've tried B paper, which I really love. I actually really like it a lot. And next week I'll have another video where I'm using watercolor board, which I loved. Spoiler alert. It was amazing. I'll talk more about that in the future, obviously, but but I, I think that there are some, some better options or, or at least things that might be more suited for certain applications with my, with my paintings in the future. So I would like to be able to try a lot of them and have kind of a catalog of which ones work best for, say, if I want more textural watercolors or which ones if I want to have line work or which ones if I want it to be lineless. So being able to use the thing that works best for that specific piece will be really nice. And one of the final things that I did end up doing, which I pretty much always do, is where I go in with a white gel pen to add highlights. That I really utilized to get rid of some of that bleeding. Since the bleeding happened on the edges of colors, it 
was a great place to put rim lighting that would cover up that bleed. So that's one reason why it wasn't as frustrating or, or as stressful. It was because I knew that I had the step later on that would be able to use, that I would be able to use to completely cover it up and make it look a lot tidier. So that's always nice to have a few techniques up your sleeve that you can use to fix certain situations like this. And that is it for today. I do have the original painting as well as prints of her available at my art shop. There's a link right at the very top of the description that'll take you over there. And I also have a link to my Patreon. And I wanna give a huge thank you as always to my patrons over there. They help this channel keep going and they help me create more art. So thank you guys so much, but I will be back next Wednesday with another video. And I do have again, that announcement that I will be at Denver Comic Con on June 15th through the 17th at the Artist Alley table W4. So I would love to be able to meet you guys there. Uh, that is about it though, for reals this time. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you then.